Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 1.0 JavaScript for documentation not included. We are going to be discussing the flavors of the month, the good, the bad, and everything in between. We are joined by Jay, our special guest to talk all things JavaScript. And you're joining our hosts with the most, something along those lines. You have Patrick, you have Chris, you have myself. And before we begin, I have a confession to make. Is this what I was going to pull you up on? I didn't give you guys any warning on this at all. Oh, okay. Well, actually, there's a little bit of warning. Chris threatened to come at me on the show about this, so I'm just going to go ahead and fess up now. This show was almost released as a patch. Yep. She called it version 1.1. .1. And we all know, <laughs> we all know as software developers, you never release anything as a point 0.1. You release it initially as a zero, unless, of course, you've had alpha or beta, beta releases that you know, I saw it didn't I was, really count. <laughs> I was slightly confused by that, but I decided that it's probably on purpose and that I really shouldn't be questioning that. <laughs> Versioning is a is a heightened subject, isn't it, in the uh, in the old development world? Yeah, I just stay away from it. Like people have really religious beliefs about it. So I'm like, yeah, um gonna be there. Mm -hmm. oh, oh wow. But yes, so hi Jay, welcome to the show. Hey there, thank you. you Want to can... take a moment and introduce yourself? Tell people a little bit about what you do, who you are, that kind of a thing? Yeah, uh, well, I'm Jay, Jay Kano, and uh, I met Josie a few years ago uh, when I created Plotist, which is a web application for writers. And since then, uh, we've been very close, I think, <laughs> Josie and I. If you count arguing. <laughs> yeah, we love arguing about everything, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything we agreed on? Yeah, I think a couple of times, but not really. They were written in a calendar, I think, <laughs> twice. The twice world would so be a boring far. place if everyone agreed all the time. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, so yeah, I'm a developer, generic, software engineer, or something like that. And I've been working on with JavaScript and similar technologies for the past five, six years. Uh, before that, I actually used JavaScript, but it was in the late 90s where it was just to add some trail to your mouse cursor. Oh dear, <laughs> geocities.com, eat your heart out. What, what sorry? Geocities.com. Geocities. If you yeah. remember when the web first came out, <laughs> Geocities was a place where all of the worst websites were, and everything had a trail, everything had a transition, every page click did a flip, yeah. oh, <laughs> marquees everywhere, blink, the blink yeah. tag, God, thank I mean, God ooh, that's yeah. obsolete now. The blink I'm tag was my favorite. I'm sort of nostalgic <laughs> after it. You don't see that nowadays, and you know I kind of I kind of miss it. I miss the websites trying to give me seizure when I open them. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a. I can, I can point you to a couple of websites that can actually do that for you right now. But we'll do that after the show. Yeah, the way back machine. Get a lot of oh no! <laughs> don't even need that. Trust me. But yes, as we go with every single show, we start off with a random question that has absolutely nothing at all to do with programming. Last week, we were talking about what our favorite childhood toys were. This week, what is your catchphrase? Do you have one? Oof. Um. Uh. <laughs> the blank stares begin. <laughs> actually, ac actually, I do, and it's... Uh, Is it's... it the kind of thing you should not say in a lot? No, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, actually, it's actually PG-13. It's, um, uh, <laughs> well, it's basically whenever me and my boss are discussing any sort of solutions, my typical conclusion of my part of talking is, well, it's stupid, but it works. <laughs> whenever I have really dumb solution, that it just works. <laughs> and then you walk off. Well, that was seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, like, he, you can tell the, you'd say the giving upness. I, I'm not sure how to find a, word, a proper English word for it, but you can see the exhaustion in the eyes of of my boss whenever whenever I sort of start that sentence. <laughs> I cannot so there... think. I cannot think of a, a catchphrase. I'm not a superhero, or a, I know some some uh, jobs are advertised as requ superhero developer required, but. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Yeah. In my oh. case, I know I have many, but I cannot think of any at the moment because they just come up in the moment. But yeah. there are things. Mine. Else. Go on. Fair point. Well made. Fair point. <laughs> that's, well made. that's surprisingly wholesome. 
You don't want to hear my my other ones. I actually cannot say live on stream. <laughs> Twitch <laughs> probably won't allow that. But well, d d d uh, actually, I'm not. Well, there might be a recording of me somewhere saying it when I was being attacked while when I used to stream games. Um, but there is this <laughs> phrase that. Out of nowhere, I say it, and it has, I don't know why, I don't know where it came from, I don't know what put it together, other than just the randomness of my brain, but yeah. I just thought, I of, do have another it's, one. it's not a catchphrase, but it's something I said once, and I, I'm not sure which state of mind I was in, but I found it hilarious, and I still find it funny. Make like a rock and shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a catchphrase, but... <laughs> You know, that's that's it's it's not an on and it's not an onomatopoeia. There's an uh, non sequitur. That's the word I was looking for. That's slightly non sequitur of you. I would, yeah. uh, I would say it was just like it's stupid. It was funny. It yeah, was well, so it, I, I said it once, and but it makes sense at the same time because rocks don't speak. Right. <laughs> they also don't have the capacity to speak. So anyway, but <laughs> overanalyzing I, things. That is surprising amount to the, of depth to that. I was just sort of hung up on the shut the fuck up part of it. <laughs> yeah, it's not something we hear, usually hear from Chris. <laughs> Chris is usually yes. very tame. It's usually Patrick we have to watch. I apologize for the language, <laughs> by the way, but we are uh, rated mature, I believe, on Twitch, aren't we? So. Yeah, so that means we can get away with anything, right? Hmm. No. You don't, you don't want to know what I'm wearing or what I'm not wearing. Oh, oh. boy, here we go. It started. <laughs> It, at this point in time, I I I just I uh, man. I'm can I crying. can I show you what I'm wearing? Because it's I, I put this on ex uh, especially for you, Josie. Okay. Okay. I mean, go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I will say to you. That? Yes, I can, and I will say to you exactly what I say when my husband does the same thing, and that is, sorry, you're not in the Sedours list. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, moving into our topic today, we're going to be talking about JavaScript. Now, I'm going to be adding some links into the chat for people who may have no idea what JavaScript is, because the purpose behind this show is not to sit here and go, we know everything and we're going to tell you everything. It's to dig into things that you don't know, things that you want to learn, things that you're hoping to gain more knowledge in. Our rule of thumb here is going to be no question if it is relevant is stupid. Absolutely. Now I say if it's relevant, because if you turn around and you start asking me about the dinosaurs, I'm just gonna look at you like you're a little silly, uh, unless you can somehow relate it to programming development or something that we do in some way, shape or form. So please keep that in mind as we go through this. And I mean, heck, even if I could get the guy who created JavaScript on here, might I add, it's JavaScript is now uh, over 20. Oh, yeah, easily. Over 20 years. It's, I think it's 23 this year, 22, 23 this year. And um, it's gone through several different iterations and things like that. And uh, that, that means there are going to be people watching who, who, who weren't even born when JavaScript was made. <laughs> who I feel old. Patrick, were you born was, when JavaScript was? It was the it was dangerously close, 20, 26, so three years, three years off. But that was, when you said 20, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel, I feel juvenile. Yeah, I think back in the early days of JavaScript, there was, uh, there was a bit of a battle going on, wasn't there? I think we had, we had JavaScript, yeah. we had JScript, we also had VBScript as well, which was kind of put, trying to take a bit of, well, a bit of it, but it, it it was rubbish and very insecure. There's also ActionScript, which came about because of JavaScript, which was a whole thing with Macromedia, which then got purchased by Adobe. And then, you know, there's a whole, Whoa. there's a fantastic talk. And one of the things I'll be doing, by the way, in a moment is putting it, uh, a link into our Twitch chat. It's a talk about literally the history of JavaScript hmm. from the guy who created it. <laughs> and then secondly, before we begin, I did a poll on our Twitter. If you're not following us on Twitter, please do. DNI stream. Um, I did a poll to ask people uh, how they feel about JavaScript. <laughs> what do you think the result is? Oh, Apathy? Gen no, I don't know. I, I love it personally. I'm, I'm a big Intense fan of JavaScript. Hatred. Well, it's a, uh, the question I asked is, um, well, it's more or less a statement, true or false kind of a thing. It's JavaScript, the best thing ever. And our choices were, what's that? Absolutely. Oh, hell no, and rubber duckies save us. At this current moment in time, the rubber ducky that I have is winning. Hmm. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think there's a lot of misconceptions about JavaScript. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shut up and let Chris do a bit of talking and leading with Jay about JavaScript and stuff. So, Well, first of all, I'm going to start off asking a few questions. I'm going to ask Jay, Jay the question first. First of all, what experience of JavaScript do you have? What have you covered? I know you do front and back end, but what's your, I mean, where did you come from? Why did you, why do you choose to, to use it now? Yeah. Um, well, in my case, my my story with development is is long. I started when I was like six years old with a, a computer that didn't have a hard drive and programming in BASIC there. Mm -hmm. uh, and since then, I moved on to C, C++, Python, and nowadays is, is JavaScript. Um, so the reason I chose JavaScript was basically because um, I had this idea for, for an application I wanted to develop. And back then, when I, when I had this idea, the best thing you could do for cross-platform interoperability uh, with applications was using something like a Qt library or GTK or something like that. And it was always like ugly. The build sizes were huge. And there was a lot of like problems of integrating GTK because uh, I remember applications like uh, GIMP that had a strong community behind it. You could not just install GIMP. You had to install GTK and then install GIMP. So it was a really, really terrible experience uh, when you wanted to develop something that was cross-platform. Mm -hmm. And a few years ago, uh, five, six, seven years ago, I started looking into developing this idea again. And I realized that with the new developments in web applications, it was uh, possible to actually do a, a cross-platform application using just JavaScript. So for me, the first thought I had when I saw that was that uh, I, I was kind of like, are you joking? JavaScript? Mm. Really? Because <laughs> um, my experience with JavaScript was in the late 90s, early 2000s, like adding trails to the mouse and doing some pop-ups thing and stuff like that. And it was like, that language cannot be useful for anything other than that. And, but then I read uh, Crockford's uh, The Good Parts. I looked into Backbone and um, Underscore and all these libraries. And so you were I, looking specifically at web libraries rather than necessarily cross-platform client-server. Yeah, so. it was just like a web. It was going to be just a web uh, a website. Um, I had some experience in the past using uh, jQuery, but jQuery was also very Pickle. <laughs> and bulky. It was the, it, yeah. And it was easy to build like a, a small interactivity with the page, like fetching data and things like that. But it was not possible to actually build an application that had uh, different pages. I mean, it was possible, but it was a huge pain to actually develop something that had different views and interactions between different components, something like that. Uh, but that, all that changed when Backbone came in, at least for me. It was Backbone was the the framework that showed me that you can actually have applications on the web, mm -hmm. that it was not just like a for quick and dirty interactions. I'm going to jump in right here, and I'm yep. going to say, poor Patrick. No. His, <laughs> his face is just kind of gone. Do me a favor. No, it's, I'm this. focused. Like, I, that's know, my focus <laughs> face. I know you're focused, but there are going to be people who don't know anything about Backbone or even what you mean by that. Would you take a moment and explain yeah. what it is, and what you got out of it, and what made your brain go, woo? Um, so yeah, um, should I assume that people know what jQuery is? <laughs> yeah, no. should assume. Yeah. Well, uh, well, well, to be fair, I was thinking about this earlier on. I was thinking about the way that we, we kind of need to deliver this. So mm -hmm. we're teaching people. We do need to explain kind of what things are and why they exist. We don't need to go into too much detail because we're going to cover that later on. But for now, yeah, just, I mean, Backbone, it's a framework, isn't it? It's it's what we, yeah. we use yeah. to develop a web application in a structured way that makes it much more maintainable, essentially. That's my exactly. opinion of it, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly it. Because um, before that, uh, JavaScript has had... Um, when you do web applications, when you do web development, usually you think of the three components of the web, or of any website, that it's basically HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML just gives you the, the structure of the content. CSS gives you the styles, the look of the content, and JavaScript adds the interaction. With jQuery, it was really easy to do the interaction side because what it did was basically uh, a really good uh, 
traversal tool, a really good tool. So you could actually just like see all the content and access any part of the content at any time. Yeah. Uh, but that and also fetching data on the background, like querying servers and things like that. So it was basically those two things together that made it a great tool for building websites. Um, but just with those two things, um, it's very difficult to actually build a, a web application because a web application requires routing, for example. You need to change the path on your browser to go to a new page. Uh, there are many different things on screen at the same time, and you need to coordinate them. Uh, there are many things that are involved in creating a web application that jQuery is possible to do, but it would be really, really painful to actually do it. So, so if I remember rightly, now I've, I have worked with Backbone. Um, I worked with yeah. Backbone knock Knockout um, and well, uh, jQuery and MooTools as well back in the day. I can't remember if Backbone is an SPA or not. Is it an SPA? Uh, for me, it was the first SPA. Right. Um, it had the... Define SPA, so, so acronyms are naughty. I was just about to. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so an SPA is a single page application, and that differs. Uh, the reason that I asked that is because you mentioned that it had routing built into it. Routing typically is handled by HTTP. It's handled by the protocol, which when you type into your browser, the, the mm -hmm. server will respond to it and basically say, here you go, here's a, here's a page. So what the routing does is on the client side, it essentially fakes the URL in a way, and it on the client side, it uses the URL to essentially route you to a component or to a, a piece of code that renders the page for you. So that is everything mm -hmm. happens on your browser, so it's a lot quicker, and that's why we get much faster and much better experiences these days. <clears throat> As an example for people who may have absolutely no idea, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Twitter is a single page app, isn't it? I'm pretty yeah. sure it will be, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, the, it's, you, you will, you'll see that it, there's a lot of single page apps in today's day and age. Something that you might think is just a regular website is actually a single page app. In Facebook fact, is. There's, there's, something, there's something to be said in today's day and age about what is the difference between a website and an app? Aren't they sort of the same? And there's differences. There's no. terminology that mm. separates the two. To be fair, it's um, really interesting because before you even before you mentioned it, I haven't really realized it that a lot of websites are in that way, and I haven't noticed the shift because back in the day, actually, my first ex my first experience with game development was making multi-user dungeons type of games mm. in PHP, yeah. and it <laughs> definitely was not a single uh, single page thing. Mm. You actually had to send people all over the place, and oh my god, the performance was abysmal. Because uh, you're con I mean, on a slow connection, for example, imagine you're sending a handshake, well, you're sending a request, it then does a handshake and then sends you back the response every time, whereas everything's yeah. on the server, it's slow up front, Although we've yeah, got mechanisms we to hide that. Back then, like, did we have at least caching for the art assets? Because we may not have that. The, it, that's and, been developed. I mean, HTTP handles that. Yeah, um, yeah because, be, because, like, remember, uh, fantasy multi-use on multi-user RPGs, so a lot of pretty graphics, really heavy graphics in 2004. Yep, uh, 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 on a 56k <laughs> modem, you're, you're buggered. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah, Take me just... back to the good old text-based RPGs. So, yes, yeah, you decided to use uh, Backbone then, Jay. You were, um, yeah. uh, you, um, you decided... That was back in the 90s or late, early 2000s, I'm assuming. Back when, no. For me, it was 2010, 2011. Right, okay. Was it, was it not uh, I mean, that? Uh, jQuery was in the 90s, early right. 2000s. Uh, <laughs> Backbone was 2010, 2011. Okay. And basically, the main difference with um, jQuery and Backbone, Backbone, I think the first versions were actually using jQuery, if I'm not wrong. Because uh, it still needed a way of uh, going through the document and changing parts. And I think they uh, relegated that to jQuery or some other lightweight library to do that type of handling. Um, but what um, Backbone introduced, at least to me, because probably there are other libraries that were doing that before, uh, was the idea of uh, MVC, Model View Controller, uh, which is a, a very useful abstraction of what an application is. And basically, model view controller says that every application can be divided in a model, that it's your data, whatever you want to show, the view, which actually shows things on the screen, and the controller that manipulates the view, sorry, the model to put it into the view. Um, so it was as simple as that. Backbone just gave you the NVC, the model view controller, 
and you could just define all the, the, the models for all the data that you're going to show, for example, uh, usernames and pictures and things like that for a profile, or um, if it's an email application, a model can be the email itself and with the header and the content of the email and things like that. Then um, with those three elements, you could just divide any application. And if you include some routine on top of that, you have a way of actually activating certain controllers at certain times to manipulate the models and put the new views in place. So it was a really, really easy abstraction. And it was very, very powerful because uh, back then we didn't know anything about components or components were something that people were starting to talk about, mm -hmm. which is a conversation for later, I guess. Right. <laughs> so so you used Backbone, what, in a professional capacity or was it on your own projects? Um, well, it was my own project. It was the it was Plot is the project oh, where okay, I right. made Josie. Um, but initially it was my own thing. I was building it for myself. It was just later that I decided to publish it as a as a web application for anyone. <laughs> oh, good stuff. So and I'm, I'm assuming now it isn't using Backbone because Backbone, as we all know, has fallen out of favor. <laughs> it's not really being used anymore. It actually, I'm a Microsoft guy. I come from a, mostly a Microsoft background, but a while ago, Microsoft were packaging Backbone as part of all of their templates in Visual Studio for all of their website temp uh, site templates. Now they're targeting Angular and React, and it changes and it moves on a regular basis. Mm. So, I mean, <laughs> what? How have you? How have you dealt with the transition from Backbone to a new? I'm assuming you're using a new framework now. Yeah, uh, I, we've been through a few already. <laughs> okay, so what are you currently using then at the moment? <laughs> Um, so basically it was very organic and something that people, uh, a term that people use to refer to this period from early 2010, 2011 until now is the framework fatigue or JavaScript fatigue, Absolutely. which is basically that in the last five to 10 years, we had like 20, 30 different frameworks, all of them doing exactly the same thing, but it's slightly differently. Mm -hmm. Um, and the thing is that when we outgrew Backbone, it was not that Backbone was bad or anything. It was just that we could see that there were things that were better. And the first version that we built um, was a proof of concept. It was me teaching myself how to do web development and at the same time uh, preparing this web application for people to use. And once we, we completed the first version, um, we started looking at other options. Um, I tried React, but this was, I don't know, um, early 2015, yeah. maybe 2016. So it existed, but it was introducing a lot of complexity that was un unseen uh, uh, at that mm -hmm. point. Uh, you needed to learn how to use Webpack or any of these web bundlers. You needed to know to actually how to build a pipeline for compilation and things like that. And, and their specific templating language as well that they had. They have, yeah. rather. Yeah. And the templating language was okay, but for me, the main problem was uh, the setup cost of it was really, really high back then. And the, there were some slightly weird things with um, uh, lists, for example. Uh, they didn't have the concept of having a key for each element, so you could actually refer to it later on. Right. Um, so uh, there were a few things that were a bit awkward at the yeah. beginning. I mean, I didn't um, use I didn't use React early on. Um, I've I've played around with it recently. I'd say maybe in the last four or five months, <laughs> but it's probably moved on seventeen versions since I last played with it. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I I'm a. Have, I have to say, it it is one of those things. If you are watching this and you have never touched JavaScript, but you may know some other languages. Um, you can honestly feel daunted. You can sit there and go, uh, what? I'm supposed to try and learn JavaScript, but someone said I should focus on jQuery, but no, they say view, but no, no, they say no, 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 react, no, angular, no, what, angular four? <laughs> What's angular three? What, 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 what are these things? It can honestly come across as a, a barrier to entry. You don't Do you want have to a recommendation? Do you, know what Do you have it's a done recommendation to, me, to get over that? As a, as a developer, what it's done to me, it's made me a better developer. Now, there, there is, yes, there is, as always, whenever you're faced with 
tons of new things to my job is to do that that is i'm a i'm a software consultant i'm a software developer i'm supposed to learn new things <laughs> you know i'm having to pick up just for a, a client i'm having to look at some ssrs stuff which is sql server reporting services which i've i've played with before i've set it up i've i've configured it but i'm not an expert in it i'm gonna have to relearn the lot since i last played with it i think three versions of sql server have come out so you know i'm hmm. i'm gonna to have to pick that up again that's part of our job and if you get fatigued doing that and you're not you don't enjoy that i'm not sure you're cut out to be a developer to be fair yeah, you, know, you know you know what's hilarious though the the hilarious thing is that as far because i'm incredibly for those who are not aware and are watching i'm incredibly removed from um so from from a web dev it's like a black box of i don't know it <laughs> thing black that. magic but, it, but it's 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 uh, wonderfully uh, entertaining we haven't even and, touched it yet on the, and the, <laughs> and the I mean, I've I've done some PHP like fucking ten years ago. Um, so you know, but uh, the funny <laughs> thing is, um, even like as far as I remove as I am from the current game, the, uh, web development, even I know the jokes about like too many frameworks and them changing every two months. Like that's been a staple of programmer humor for the past two or three years. I finished. So, I finished yeah. a job for a client maybe three or four months ago. Um, they've asked me to look at it again now. I think I might have said this last week actually. And it's three ver three major versions of Angular have passed <laughs> since then. Everything has changed. Uh, the, between five and six, they uh, they changed they changed RxJS. They up upgraded the reactive framework, and the reactive framework is the thing that makes everything asynchronous and allows us to allows us to do these single page applications and allows us to it, it's a framework that makes things easier for us basically easier to, for developers to do all of this ajax stuff mm -hmm. um and they've upgraded that and it's a completely different way you have to pipe everything into into all of yep. uh, it's totally and uh, you have to import things in from in from different <laughs> places and it there's not even half the time there's not even any backwards compatibility it's just deal with it oh, get on with oh, it oh that, hurts. that that was a fun change but this is where <laughs> sender comes in and i'm hoping we maybe do but, the, but on the other side the wonderful job security i mean right <laughs> <laughs> well see that's 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 a thing you know um if you happen to be in the in the world of programming or even in the world of languages if you're studying different languages like english spanish russian etc languages evolve and it's the same thing with the programming languages they evolve and needs and creativity will dictate their development course and yet, when you have to make a decision of what feature do we keep with this latest version of JavaScript, or what do we keep in this version of Angular, hmm. I, it's it, there, there's almost like I, I feel sorry for one the companies that try to hire us because they'll sit there going, "Well, you're doing this on purpose," and you're sitting there going, "We're really not." No, no, we're not. Well, I've got the opposite I, side I feel, of things there because well. Good. People, people that hire, especially contractors, they want uh, someone who's got loads of experience in this one framework, you know. And I've focused on one of them. I've looked at the others. I can pick them up if I need to and work just as efficiently in them. But that's the problem on our side of the fence. We don't. <laughs> well, see, that, that's that's the thing, you know. Uh, what I was trying to get at before with the whole concept of the barrier to entry is learn your fundamentals. Because they are cross-purpose in any language, in any framework, in anything. Learn your fundamentals. Mm. Yeah, but the fundamentals you know? are also changing. Uh, yes. No, yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> see, see I, I come from back in the day when it was all like, well, we need to focus on bubble sorting now. And, you know, that kind of a thing. So yeah. everything is like, oh, it's so different. But anyway. That's the thing, because um, I was thinking of, of setting up a programming course here in Cambridge for for free, just for fun, to to teach people how to get into web application development or application development in general. And I sat down to think uh, what I should teach. And it's kind of like the basics of programming is the least priority. Because, uh, yeah, you need to teach how to create a variable, what a variable is, what to, how to create a function, and small things like that. But once you start using a framework, it doesn't matter. It's it's everything changes completely. It's kind of like a programming. There you is just called functions. Constantly. I think I think the fundamentals <laughs> here may be the 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 way that you approach it rather than the fundamentals of a particular language. Hmm. There is, as I said, we're always learning. We're always pushing ourselves as developers, and and that's 
that that's the kind of person you need to be in my eyes you need to be somebody who is willing to pick up new stuff and who is willing to to play around with all of the little intricacies and all of the little things within a particular framework if you want to learn i mean if i want to learn react i'm gonna i'll go off and i'll spend two or three weeks of my own spare time playing around with it reading tutorials there learn how to google God, that is the number one. That is the number one thing oh, advice I would give anybody. I was, okay. I was going to say, the, the way you were progressing with the entire discussion about the creation of programming, I was thinking, well, why not just replace it by Googling 101? Okay. <laughs> Googling 101 is a thing. There is something to be said for being able to find the answer. I am going to yeah. just throw this out there because uh, Dar Securitas needs to say this. If you are going to go out looking for how to learn something about a language, Please don't use it in production. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. <laughs> there so, are so many examples, and this is this comes from the fact that you know I don't have the greatest um, area of expertise when it comes to, to JavaScript. I mean, I mess with jQuery because it's stuff that I have to do for websites and things like that. But when it comes to Angular and things like that, I'm still learning. And hmm. some of the things that I went to learn, I was looking at it and I'm going, wow, this is really cool. I can actually see how this all integrates. And then I'll just, you know, bring a Postman and I'll do some crazy API things. And I'm like, woo, this is all exciting. And then I stopped and I looked at it and I went, this is vulnerable to attack. Please tell me no one actually decided to use this on a production, but people don't are even talk. So you know this, is, they, this is sort of the disclaimer from Darth Securitas the, the, saying, please be careful. There is be always smart. a disclaimer about anything you pick up from anywhere. If you're a professional software mm. developer, you know that you might be able to copy and paste that code, but I, I have never copied and pasted a piece of code and not heavily modified it and changed it and changed the inputs and outputs and put various guards in place to make sure that that code is secure and production ready. That's the key here. But you know what? If you're learning, you're not at that point and you don't need to worry about the security side of things at the moment. Now, I know that's, I know that's not good advice, but if you're learning, there's, there's much more priority here about the fundamentals of programming. I think that's what Jay was kind of... Well, see, this goes back to, to it, though. I mean, Jay discovered and learned about Backbone and JavaScript because he wanted to create a tool, an app, something. I mean, I happen to know his history behind Plotus. I mean, he was like, I must do something to better organize self. Thus, Plotus was created. But Plotus grew its own monster and hydratic head thing. Um, yep. <laughs> but he discovered that, and he used the tools to build that. But I also trust Jay with security, so that's, that's neither here nor there. But yeah, yeah I'm a bit paranoid. Yeah, you, you. <laughs> it Just seems like with WebDev, the old adage of uh, a little learning is a dangerous thing, rings very true. Because there, there is something to be said for having just enough knowledge yeah. to be dangerous. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, very much so. Also, everyone, please say hello to the ne the Nexus from Texas. <laughs> the Nexus from Texas. Oh, hello. Oh, brilliant. I hey, love Nexus. that. You just, you just had to say <laughs> Yeah, somebody in the chat's called the Nexus. Nice. Hello. It's a very <laughs> How good are thing. you doing? And, <laughs> and I have to also point this out because I, I do happen to be aware that Nexus has a bit of knowledge. PHP is still a thing. Stop knocking it. It shouldn't be. <clears throat> ah, I threw that out there. How'd you like that? Oh, you, oh. You, you, you want a debate, don't you? I there's, need there's you no, on the show. There's no debate, debate to be have had about PHP. <laughs> there's there's nothing you can say to me. But anyway, this show is about JavaScript, so let's continue yes, with that. So anyway. <laughs> So yes, Jay, you were talking about. Um, you still didn't tell us the current, unless unless you don't want to, or you're not no, obliged uh, to tell I'm, us. What I was current. getting there. Basically, I, I tried uh, React, but it was not mature enough to actually uh, use it. Um, it was around the time where Redux came out, and Redux was kind of like a whole revolution in terms of uh, web application development. Mm -hmm. um, with this, uh, we decided to go with Ember, which is a very mm -hmm. nice framework for me. It was really great because. Uh, back then, it was actually it was only me uh, and developing. And Ember basically did everything for you. It took care of all the structure, not only the code structure, but also the logical structure of the application. And, and so it was quite easy to use, and it was quite easy to maintain. And it came with a lot of stuff like uh, data management, all that stuff. It was done by Ember itself, so you didn't need to add anything there. Um, when I was almost finishing with the Ember version, uh, I was joined in the company by Simon, uh, our greatest Simon. <laughs> okay. uh, and he hated Ember because uh, he felt like very constrained because it's actually the thing. Ember 
is great because it gives you very little room to actually move. It just directs everything it, to get it's things opinionated. Done. It's <laughs> it's that opinionated thing that we I keep yeah. going on about. Yeah. I could see um, the value of that. Well, hmm? that's the thing. It's, it's of all things, Patrick, you're an artist and things like that. If I told you, draw me a picture, you look at me like I'm crazy. If I gave you very rigid guidelines that it needs to be X colors and just for fun, it'll be hex because you have this thing against RGBA. I don't understand, <laughs> uh, but it'll be hex. And, you know, it has to be a certain size with DPI, et cetera. Having those kind of strictures is really good in art. Same thing can be applied for development, especially if you see development as art. I'm just saying. I mean, oh yeah, that, definitely. There is there is definitely value in in constraints in uh, any creative process, including programming. It's just that, um, and well, bec because programming has such a huge array of ways to approach an issue, right? And every single one of them has disadvantages and disadvantage, disadvantages and advantages. I could see someone who is very particular about their approach to problem solving really hating certain limitations in mm. in uh, of the framework so i'm i'm on that side of the fence i probably would have been I, i'd not i've not seen amber myself i don't know it exists that's about as much as i've i've done with it but uh, ember sorry not amber um but it it's <laughs> any any framework that i've ever worked within uh, any framework whatsoever it has restrictions and you cannot get around them a lot of the time mm. and this is why all these new frameworks get born Angular exists, or you know, it exists because uh, Google didn't have a platform that they were happy with, so they decided to develop it. As simple as that. That, that unless someone can tell me different, that's as, that's what I understand anyway. <laughs> I don't remember. I just I just know that at least within the evolution of JavaScript, um, a big part of it came from uh, the glorious Microsoft not wanting to do certain things in within JavaScript, and then Mozilla jumping on board, and then. Chrome and like there's some weird like browser bore thing that occurred yeah, so that was part of this whole inception behind JavaScript and um, the new standards and there's some new things coming out in the new JavaScript which are really exciting but that's oh, well even the S6 is uh, is it's beautiful it's much more like uh, C sharp and I I really like it well um, you're a Microsoft guy I am I am I'm a K and R brackets guy as well and if you don't know what K and R brackets are go and look it up now. It's, make, it's easier note, than me trying to explain it. Side note, that sounds like a very cool concept for a series of novels. The Browser Wars. Told, <laughs> told you know, us I... like, a, a, you know, a war, warring kingdoms type of uh, style. Like the kingdom of Google assaulting the Mozilla Fortress. <laughs> there is actually a, a site where you learn to code by programming soldiers in a battlefield. <laughs> That, that to me is absolutely amazing. And um, Slaka, who is watching, um, who I believe unfortunately got herself confused with streams, uh, that's something you might want to direct your sons at when it comes to the programming side. There are some really cool games that actually teach logic representation and structure and all that other crazy stuff. But yes, so going back to JavaScript, because we're, we're getting closer and closer towards the end of the yeah, show. Yeah, but yes, I'm getting so, there. Plotus was Ember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the moment we finished the port to Ember, we started the migration to Angular. Oh. So, and the Ember version lasted like the, one month, two is months. It Angular one point, uh, Angular two. Okay, right. It was just released Angular two, and so I don't remember Jay's response to that. <laughs> Sorry. You're cruel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on, one man. month on a framework, that's um, that's contender. <laughs> I mean, it took me like six to nine months to actually finish the, the Ember port. It was live for a month and we, or two, <laughs> and it was replaced by Angular. <laughs> that hurts on a very fundamental level. Yeah. It took um, me about that long to learn Angular. It was one of the longest learning curves I've ever had with a framework. I found it very difficult to get my head around it. But I'm now in a point where I'm comfortable. I can do almost anything in it now, and it, mm. yeah, I didn't like that. <laughs> mm. For me, the thing is that it was not only changing to Angular that has a completely different philosophy. Is that you also have to use TypeScript? I have to. Are not you... have to. There is a JavaScript version, but basically everything is meant to be used with TypeScript. So cause then, if not, you will lose the decorators and things like that that are the key for Angular. So are you are you a fan of that then? You, you sounded like you didn't like it. 
Uh, I used to hate TypeScript because it was too close to Java for my comfort, but uh, now I love it. Yeah, good, good <laughs> lad. I was, I was really early on. We now need to find guests who hate TypeScript. If you hate TypeScript, <laughs> please let me know so that I can put these people into a ring together. I really want to watch. Yes, I'm, I, TypeScript I, I, is a, uh, for those who haven't heard of it and don't know what it is, TypeScript's an evolution of JavaScript. Um, it's not a new version of it by any stretch of the imagination. What it does is it sits over the top of it and it transpiles into JavaScript that's compatible with a browser. So JavaScript, TypeScript doesn't actually run anywhere. It, it, basically it's your development language and then you you deploy your javascript application yeah, basically it's what they call a superset so you have any typescript program sorry any javascript program is a typescript program but not any typescript is javascript meaning okay. that if you write a javascript program it can be considered a typescript application but you can also add a special syntax on top of that basic javascript syntax that is will it, make a text. Is it not the other way around <laughs> that that you can compile TypeScript into JavaScript, but you can't do it the other way? Yeah, I mean, you cannot compile JavaScript to TypeScript, but um, the syntax of TypeScript is the same as the syntax of JavaScript, except for a few things. So if you write an application on TypeScript, it can be transpiled by the TypeScript transpiler. Yes, yes. Sorry, that, that's. I think you it's said a, it the other way around. Really thing. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's, it's, it's just like additions to JavaScript. So you can write a um, plain JavaScript is still TypeScript, but when you start adding the new features, it transforms into something else. Now, so I've been using TypeScript with <laughs> um, with Angular because, as you said, it comes out of the box. I have also because I love it so much and because I've got so used to TypeScript now because it's so close to C Sharp in the way you write it. It's certainly not close in lots of other ways, but it's it's it looks syntactically the same and it's got similar concepts, at least properties, hmm. methods, that kind of um, objects, for example. Uh, the, I even, when I do a quick website that just has a simple JavaScript script on it, I even compile that into i write it in typescript now and i compile it into javascript because i love it so much i'm i'm it's my new language i hope it stays around for a while and it'll be gone in six months time completely evolved and changed <laughs> into another pokemon variety and variant of javascript no doubt today i discovered that there is something like objective j that is basically a, a objective c version of javascript or oh, not so of Java, of JavaScript. Yeah, it's JavaScript, but with the same syntax as Objective C. Right. So that, <laughs> that, that at some of... point in time, I all languages some... can you just homogenize into one language, and can we call it? Oh, oh gosh, I don't know, Duck. <laughs> I just want. Well, I, it's either that or Smurf, but that's another thing. Yeah. Do you want like the AC of programming languages, just like a one giant mega thing which contains all of the other things? Like yeah. it's, you know, <laughs> it's it'll just be another version though, and then then it'll get a fork, and then there'll be four other people yeah. who develop yeah, the same. But see, that's that's the thing. I I think that's one of the beauties. I mean, because to be perfectly honest, I I find the development of languages fascinating. As as has been pointed out on a, a previous show, I know somebody who actually programs the PLCs on boats. I'm talking about the things that are massive, giant freighter things that need to be able to turn and handle all kinds. Like, I know someone who does that. And one of the coolest things that he said to me, because he has to do a lot of machine-based uh, programming, is he says, I get to use JavaScript and learn JavaScript. Like, he's really excited <laughs> by it. I'm like, I'm sorry. Oh, there he is. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> yes, this, this is this is my friend who, who works. He's like, I get to learn these languages because I can make things in these languages for these products and these these hardware pieces of equipment. I'm like, things are changing. We're abstracting again. We should have just called ourselves the abstraction, not documentation, yeah. not included. Not, hindsight being 2020. Oh, wow. Well. Just a name, but, isn't it? It's just yeah. so someone remembers who you are. That's all they're there for. Yeah. Yeah, I exactly. mean, after all that branding and assets, please let's not change that. <laughs> so, yeah, like, let's let's not let's not worry about that. But so, we still uh, haven't nailed down exactly what plot is in yet. No, it's no. Singular. That's oh, related. you have. Yeah, that's, okay, that's what we got to. So okay, I've got did, a, did. I've got a quick question then um, for probably for Jim more than anybody else actually thinking about it. Um, you said that you you're a full stack JavaScript guy. 
So yeah. the front end's Angular, the back end? Uh, it's Node.js. The first version was Express, the second version was Happy, and now I'm Happy. moving it back to Express. I haven't heard of Happy. Is that is that a new one that's popular? No, it's actually an old one. Um, not old one. It's not that old. It's basically it started as a modification of Express to be more modular than Express. So you could right. create like plugins and things like that that was really quickly to integrate. And then they moved on and they created their own um, low level stuff. So Express um, Express and Node, or at least Node is anyway. I'm not sure, sure exactly how Express works, but Node's a, a a runtime so it allows you to run javascript on a server yeah. as an application so you could run it as a an app or a cli or anything you want anything at all yeah no this basically is the interpreter is what reads uh javascript and executes the the instructions so it doesn't express uh, it go doesn't... through node though hmm? doesn't express go through node yes yeah uh so uh, Node.js is basically just that, it's an interpreter. It's the same as you can have like the Python interpreter that reads Python programs and executes them. So this is the same, but uh, Node.js comes with an HTTP server integrated. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can just uh, call HTTP, create server, and you create a new server, and you can just um, uh, make uh, requests to the server, request and response. So it has the whole uh, feature to build uh, uh, servers. Express is just a small framework that sits on top of that layer, that it's the most basic layer that you can have. And what it does is uh, add the ideas of middleware, mm -hmm. the idea of instead of having just like um, one entry point that it's just one function into your application, you can create a stack of middleware. So the first layer can, for example, uh, parse the headers of the HTTP. The second layer can extract the cookie. The third one can extract something else, and that way, you have a web application that is segmented. Yep. On top of that, they build a uh, routing uh, into it. So you can actually create routes that have controllers attached to it. So it's basically just like uh, it Node gives you the most basic thing. You can listen uh, to HTTP requests. Uh, Express, what it does is just give you a framework so you can actually build uh, backend applications. So yep. you can build a REST API or whatever you want to put on the HTTP server. So, um, uh, so I'm presuming you have some kind of persistence somewhere as well in terms of data storage. So, what, yeah. what are you using for that? At the moment is Mongo, which is also JavaScript. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's why I asked. I was hoping that was going to be answered. Yeah. See, this is the thing. I, I, I really need to get my friend on here because she's going to come up here and she's going to be all like, "Look, people, databases. There, there's a good way to use them. You don't always have to be all up in your Mongo." There are some good things to be said for databases. Nothing wrong with Mongo. Yeah. Relational Mongo databases are very know, different I from do. document storage. Oh, yes, I understand. Um, the Nexus says there's already a compilation language that mixes everything together called Malbolge. And has yeah. a link to Malbolge. <laughs> uh, have you I, seen that? I'll have check the link. link. Thank you for the information. But... <laughs> like Now I realize why Bot removed that link. That link is a horror. Like Don't go there. <laughs> Don't, don't. It's a Wikipedia link for <laughs> Some, it, Sometimes there are horrors on Wikipedia, trust me. Have you ever looked up staph infection? <laughs> no! <laughs> Have you seen an example program? Have you seen an example program of Malbolge? No, Malbolge. I mean... right, here we go. That's a program and that's a Hello World program in Malbolge. Told you! Yeah. That it's, is... it's a nice language. I... 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 <laughs> what? That looks like a, a string that I've generated from a password generator. <laughs> yeah, or, now you know the password to his Twitter. Yeah, ki kids, don't <laughs> post path, uh, parts of your PS, uh, PSK, whatever was the name. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the joke fell apart. <laughs> so, um, so you Just like a lot of frameworks. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> oh, I feel, yeah. I feel really dirty after saying that. That just, because... Frameworks are good. They are. Oh, of they are really good, but it, there's just so many of them. Yeah, That's and it. what you said before of being paralyzed with all these options, it's something that even I, after six or seven years, I still suffer. I mean, yeah. um, now things are more stable, at least for the next couple of years, it will be more stable because it's either 
React, Angular, or Vue, and most people are actually swearing by React. <laughs> React so does seem to be the most popular. I, I've got a couple people who could argue that, um, but yes, I need to get everybody on the show. Seriously, people, <laughs> just join I the see. show because we need more topics. If, no, more if I was putting a, a percentage to them, I'd say I get probably around about five percent Vue, maybe maybe 60 70 percent react and the rest is angular maybe a little bit more angular actually i, I do it's kind of it, it's it's up and down i think um yeah. with Re react and angular the, for me the, the thing is that i want variety because um when you only have one framework things is things just don't work nicely it's it's when you yeah. hit a limitation you know <laughs> i hit limitations with angular previous versions and moved to something mm -hmm. else and did it a different way because it just wasn't quite you know at the it wasn't mature enough at that point but it's, it's getting there now it's it's certainly getting mm -hmm. there yeah it really you, you really know the pain where you when when you're in a situation when you don't have a lot of frameworks that do that specific thing that you want and there is only one of them and that one thing that, that one does that thing that you really fucking hate it and then you have to find a really <laughs> roundabout way to make that framework not do that thing. And if that looks like I'm speaking from experience, it's because I am. Like, <laughs> there were some dark times. And uh, I don't, do not remember those fondly. <laughs> yeah, the, so, to yeah, me... Variety but, for the win. Variety is amazing. <laughs> and it's worth noting that JavaScript is not the only thing that is really high up there in the world. There's also oh, no. Ruby. There's also the glorious Python. Different purposes in some cases, but I have seen people do crazy things with a whole bunch of different languages. Yeah, and then you have languages uh, like Go and other languages that can be compiled to JavaScript or any other language there. So... I don't have my Go sticker in front of me. <laughs> no! You can't bring up Go without the blue bear? Oh, well. Go is one of them languages that I've been meaning to have a look at for a while, but I haven't. E I haven't even seen an example of it. I don't. It's not something that's crossed my path, but I do really want to play mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, I want to work with that one and Kotlin and some other languages that are coming out. Rust, Rust sounds amazing. I, you know, because I've been <laughs> playing the computer game Rust quite a lot. I've, I, I only found out about Rust as a programming language because I was Googling things for Rust <laughs> for the other for the game. And I found you know out about how it. Many, like, do you know how many languages, frameworks, or like apps or whatever I've discovered because I was looking for something else and someone was just smart enough to do a really good well, set no, of SEO results? Google, Google was smart enough to customize its algorithm so you got exactly what it wanted you to get, you mean? Duck, <laughs> duck, go. Duck, duck, go. It's a smart name, but it's really horrible when you try to mention it to normal people. Like, ask, uh, be, have you ever tried, like, like I mean, casual conversation? Normal people. I'm yeah. so stuck on the normal people. See, uh, we've gotten to a point now in the show where we have gone over as far as we can in the topics with the time that we have available. We can go a lot further, but now is where we start to get a bit slap happy. And I think we've kind of covered the RTFM, which is a part of our show where we talk about the things that irritate us, uh, something that could be anything within the world. In this particular case, for me, it's the whole, I want more people involved in Java, in JavaScript and Java. I hate saying, mm. Java's a topic for another another show. That yes, please. I've got, I've got my feelings <laughs> there on that. But I want more people involved in JavaScript. And my biggest bugbear is that it can be a very, very, very difficult thing to get into if you don't have somebody willing to help you. And even if you do go off looking on your own, you can find yourself frustrated. You can find yourself confused because just like with any good old fashioned programming language, if you've got yourself your good old book, and I was just about to lift my book up, but then I realized that's probably not something that I should put on the air. Um, but anyway, if you go and you try to copy examples of code and they don't work, because you're trying to learn some of the things they're refreshing, it's because you didn't have the right setup or whatever. It's it's my bugbear. Point being, though, RTFM. Yeah, don't, <laughs> That's our frustration. Yeah, don't don't copy, don't copy and paste. Copy and learn. That's. <laughs> That's uh, see, I have the same <laughs> philosophy Jay has when it comes to languages. It's not a matter of copying pacing. It's a matter of if they say use this code, don't just use the code given to you in the book. You know actually type it out and go this is doing something this is performing a particular function this is calling a particular variable this is parsing this a particular thing this is calling this particular method like 
handwriting yeah. out examples that are in books. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, everyone has their Hello World, although I've never actually used Hello World. I have always used something else in my very first app. I type even the Hello World examples. Like <gasps> I said, Do you say Hello World as well? Sometimes. I I use... Weird! <laughs> I Why use... did that personalize it? I, use I know it's going to last two minutes, so why? <laughs> Jeff is my placeholder text for things. If you ever see anything anywhere, it's just Jeff. I, I know some who use Bob. <laughs> Bob okay. is their thing. My Every kind of on there, so... Lorem <laughs> Jeffson. Uh, in my case, I there's uh, three different Ipsums. If I'm going to go into the Ipsum world, there's three different ones I use. Bacon One Ipsum. is Cat Ipsum. Because cat, one is bacon ipsum, and one is business generator ipsum. If I really want to drive somebody <laughs> crazy, it's that whole we must put all our ducks in a oh. row to make oh. certain that we are synergizing. That is my favorite I'm ipsum right here. now. I uh, absolutely love that. Um, <laughs> I like the examples that say here is broken code and it is broken this way, fix it. The Nexus says that. <laughs> actually, I kind I would actually, in a way, prefer that as a teaching methodology. I I like the idea of here is a code example. There is something wrong with this. I'm not telling you what it is, but it's something we've covered in the past 15 videos we've watched, or the past seven books and chapters that you've read, or something. Can you tell me what the problem is? I like those, yeah. but I also like puzzles, and I am super weird. Slip some is the best Ipsum. I'm almost afraid to click. Uh. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> that, yeah, that is straight up for Patrick. I was expecting Congrats. the stream to be taken over with audio then. For... I like that. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's actually pretty good. Um, but yes, we're pretty much at the end of our show where we have to unfortunately cut it short. Trust me, I could talk to Jay for hours, and I do at times. I've tried to keep my mouth <laughs> shut this time and let Chris have his way because, yes, Jay, Jay and I go back pretty much a bit. But, Jay, tell people how to find you, pimp out anything you want to pimp out, tools you use, uh, things you've developed, things that you might want help with, things that you want to just like pimp. So be a gangster, Jay. Be gangster. Yeah. The my passion was basically is basically Plotist. It's uh, you can find it on three w's dot dot com. I know that you like saying www dot Three w's <laughs> Three W's dot plotus dot com instead of www dot plotus. Never heard anyone use that before. I've, so, I've heard it? someone say woo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> woo. <laughs> yeah. So that you can find if you are a writer. It's a web application where you can take notes about your uh, characters and locations and put them together in a timeline. Um, we're constantly developing it. We're driving improvements. So it's a good place to see my work. Uh, I'm currently now working for another company, so I'm going to give them a shout out, shout out which what? is Aula Education. The uh, website is aula.education. And there we're developing with React, uh, a web application for, well, a general application, because we have also mobile uh, and desktop versions, uh, for um, centralizing the communication in universities. So you can speak with your teachers, your professors, with anyone in your uh, educational environment, and you can see your assignments and things like that. And on Twitter, you can- something like that for us here, so we can come up with <laughs> cool little tutorials and set it up and build a platform around documentation not included. I have thought of things already, and I've got things- I, I, I know. <laughs> festering away, but I'm still on version 0 0.2 of the website, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of work on it this week, but I haven't released, but I've got a... I haven't had time, I've been busy, what's... Anyway, but go ahead, sorry, Sorry, Jay, Jay we were... And you've been giving me shit for being late with the videos. Do you hey, know how many hours I've put in, by the way? Shut yes. up before you have a go. <laughs> yes, I was about to say, Ian, I've been really busy. We've gotten a lot done before the very first MVP. I, uh... I'm shocked. Are you implying I'm not? <laughs> like, I'm implying you shouldn't be say telling us off. That's what I'm implying. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> Continue, Jay. Wow. You, you Sorry, have Jay, floor. as you were saying about the awesome <laughs> Aula. Yeah, no, the, the last thing is just my Twitter handle is Sente. It's S-E-N-T-H-E. And I'm not active lately. 
but if you want to reach out to me, you can go there. <laughs> Do okay. me a favor to make things really, really awesome and fun. Send absolutely everything that you can involving cats to Jay. Tons of pictures of cats. Okay. Yeah. Dox the boy with actually. cats. I know you do. <laughs> I'm trying to be. I'm actually trying to do something good for you because it's so rare. With us. <laughs> Normally, I'm the one bringing you issues and trouble. But yeah, send him cat stuff, pictures, and things. All right. Excellent. Do you guys have anything else you want to say before I do some crazy weird stuff? No, I think I'm uh, I'm covered there. Thank you very much for having you, Jay. Having, having, uh, for coming along, Jay. It's been nice yeah. having you. And uh, thank you for having me. I will definitely <laughs> have you back again because it's uh, you've definitely got a lot to say and a lot of re very relevant things. It was definitely great in a, in, in a lot of ways a cautionary tale about the web development. Hmm. <laughs> then move into the frameworks. Yeah, yeah, it's a rabbit hole. You start with jQuery and you end up just like with the hard stuff. <laughs> See, I, I remember back in the day when JavaScript was starting to rear its head because I'm an old lady here. And I remember people saying, it'll never take off. It'll never take off. Mm. It is too intensive. People can't handle downloading all of the thing. No, it's not going to work. Oh, now it's not secure. And, and I actually had a teacher who tried to teach people that Java was the same thing as JavaScript. So <laughs> old school, like really, really old, old, old people trying to show they have what they got. Rule number one in programming, have no ego. We are always mm. learning. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, I have no doubt that we will have Jay back at some mm. point in time. I would love to. <laughs> this, is, this is a fantastic topic, and I love digging into JavaScript, and I love picking on it as much as I love it. I hate it. It's one of those things. But mm -hmm. I don't think there's a language out there that I don't love and hate at the same time. Uh, Oh, well. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Please, if you are interested in documentation not included, we are just starting up. It's going to take us a while to get absolutely everything hiccuped, ironed out, etc. But you are more than welcome to come join us on Discord. In fact, if you type hashtag Discord inside of chat, you might actually get our Discord link. If I did it right, I was really tired when I set up my bot. And no, ha not hashtag. Oh, bang Discord. <laughs> Exclamation. Bang Discord. That's exclamation. Bang's for. upside down, isn't it? Isn't the bang mm. upside down? Bang is also exclamation. Yeah. Oh, it's a crazy American. Uh, along with a full stop and all that crazy stuff. But yes, there you go. There is our Discord thingy. And it looks like I need to configure it so that other people can type it do, because do a web poor Nexus is being abused by, <laughs> by Nightbot. We have got to fix that. Um, but yes, do come join us on Discord. You can find us on Twitter at DNI Stream, which is the same thing as what you've basically got here. We have a fantastic website, which we've mentioned several times, dnistream.live. It is being written in... Well, it's just been written in quite a few things, but Angular on the front end and .NET Core <laughs> on the back end, deployed to a Linux server with uh, a full CI CD system, which I'll, I'll be putting together as soon as yes! I can. And if you're interested in actually seeing behind the scenes, one of the things we want to do is promote open source along with encourage literally developing as a community because that is what this is about is helping the community grow. You can find us at currently GitHub forward slash documentation not included. And you can check out our code if you want to jump in for play with Pope, Twitter, whatever. Twitter, you can't Twitter in GitHub. Like, actually, I guess you could, but I don't mean to say Twitter there, but please get involved. Um, we would love to have you around. And of course, if you want to come debate anything that's been said, for example, PHP should die, hint, hint, I need people didn't to help argue this. <laughs> <laughs> PHP is still viable, or if you want to talk Java, or if you actually want to come on and debate something that we've discussed that you don't agree with, please bring it on. The entire purpose here is to expand, to grow, to learn, and of course to poke fun at the fact that I can't grow a beard, and these three gentlemen have a beard. I'm not a real developer until I can grow a beard. Nope. That's the rule. That is the one rule in the, the most I can do is a Ramsey's kind of a thing with the hair. Sort of. I mean, <laughs> it works quite well, to be fair. So yeah. does it? Does it quite work? convincing. Am I dwarf like now? Oh, I'm, although I'm, I'm like a, six foot tall, but yeah. With a bit of glue and makeup, you could you could get there. So you know, don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams, and maybe someday <laughs> you too will have a glorious beard. 
<laughs> Maybe you will as well, Patrick. Yeah, I mean, like, I can call them. I'm actually going to. You opened yourself up for that, I'm sorry. <laughs> With that, a massive, massive thank you, Jay, for joining us. For next week, thank we are going me. to be joined by Sam. Sam, she is... Uh, <laughs> She is a lead developer. She's coming to talk on about what it's like to be a lead developer, things that are about being in development in general. And uh, she works with Real VNC. She's a lead dev there. So we have she jo we have she joining us. She woman, you join us. We smash. Wow, language. I have lost it. Can I, it's can obviously I late. Uh, I, I fail. I fail at credits. Other than that, thank you, Jay. Much love. For, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, myself. Thank you, Chris, for being amazing and talking JavaScript. I can't and help it. for you awesome people for watching and joining us. And I hope to see you next week when we will be going into lead development. And then after that, it depends on who I'm able to get. Uh, Ansible is a possibility. Vagrant Docker is a possibility. Uh, there's a few things. I'm juggling so much. Join. Bye, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye.